Chapter 11 in your textbook is entitled God of Hierarchy. This is the third in a series of lessons on the triune nature of God. And to be honest with you, this is the one that is the most challenging. Because it's pretty easy for the human mind to comprehend something that's unified. It's fairly easy to comprehend a diversity of things. But now we're going to get into the tough part of the Trinity, which is how it is that three things can be one, or in what sense are three things one, and what hierarchy is in the Godhead, uh, what the nature of hierarchy is. And so this concept is perhaps one of the most difficult that we have to struggle with in the, in the course of this course. Well, let's look at that nature of God as claimed in Scripture. In Scripture, we learn that there is God the Father who has authority over God the Son. We see this in the fact that the Father gave life to the Son in John chapter 5 and 6. We also learn that the Father generated the Son in Genesis 8, 16, 17. But we also know that the Father sent the Son into the world, a number of verses that go to that, that effect. And then while Jesus was on the planet, he claims himself that he is subject to the Father. And we also have the claim that the Son, Jesus, did the work of the Father. And we have the claim by Jesus that he spoke the words of the Father. This makes sense so far. We've got God the Father, God the Son. God the Father has authority over God the Son. We also have the observation that God the Son has authority over the Holy Spirit, the third member of the triune God. Uh, it is said that the Son sent the Spirit uh, into the world following His departure from the world. Jesus said He was going to send the Spirit to the, uh, the disciples, to the apostles. And there's a claim that the Spirit, in fact, glorifies the Son. So we have the fact that God the Father sends the Son, Son sends the Holy Spirit. We have this sense of a, a simple hierarchy of God the Father over God the Son over God the Holy Spirit. This is easy. This, this uh, human mind has no trouble with this. But we add to this the fact that uh, at least on one occasion, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, for example, which you, you have then evidence that the Holy Spirit can, at least at times, uh, execute authority over God the Son. And then you have these claims that the Son will be worshipped above all. And it, it seems to imply in those situations that this is even above God the Father, suggesting that God the Son has authority, at least in some instances, over God the Father. And then you have the confusing claim, uh, the wrench in the machine, if you wish, that the Father and Son are one. So, and we have other claims that, in fact, the Father and the Spirit are one. And then you have the e equality of them, that the Father and the Son and the Spirit are equal. So here's, here's where we have this fascinating, not simple fascinating and complicated uh, hierarchy in the Godhead. It isn't simply God the Father over God the Son over God the Holy Spirit. They're somehow also equal and at different times taking different positions of authority relative to one another. This is a difficult concept for the human brain. Three persons being one, being equal, having various levels of authority over one another, uh, we struggle with this concept. I call this concept a unified hierarchy. It's not a simple uh, step-down hierarchy. It is a hierarchy, but it's also unified somehow, and that's unique, perhaps, to the Godhead. But the Bible helps us understand this in a couple of the institutions that, in fact, God created. It's illustrated, the unified hierarchy of the Godhead is illustrated in several 
organizational structures that God created among humans. It is, for example, illustrated in the family, in the relationship between the husband and the wife. The husband, we are told, is to have authority over the wife. The husband is to, uh, is, is to ex execute proper rule over the wife, and the wife is to submit to the husband. So far, that would be just a simple linear hierarchy, fairly easy to understand. But then we have uh, clear teachings that the husband is supposed to serve the wife in the same way that a ruler is to set aside his or her uh, own desires and serve the subjects, the husband is to, in fact, serve the wife, putting the wife above himself. And then, of course, we have the comments about the fact that the husband and wife are supposed to be one. This is what's claimed all the way back at the beginning of, uh, the, of marriage at the creation of Eve. The man was to leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife so that they become one. In addition, we have the claim in Corinthians that the body of the husband is the wife's and the body of the wife is the husband's. Again, we have this, when you put all these pieces together, you have a very difficult concept here. It isn't simply that the, that the husband has authority over the wife, but it, it's also true that they are one, that they are to consider each greater than themselves, uh, that they're one and greater and uh, a challenge. But we can see the similarity between the relationship that's supposed to exist between a husband and wife and the unified hierarchy of the Godhead. It seems clear, at least to me, that God has created the husband-wife relationship first of all as a picture of the unified hierarchy of, of the Godhead. The reason we have difficulty living out what the Bible tells us ought to be the relationship between a husband and wife is because we have difficulty understanding the unified hierarchy of God. But as we are increasingly successful at living out the proper relationship of a husband and wife, we picture and perhaps better understand the unified hierarchy of the Godhead. A second illustration of the unified hierarchy of the Godhead is seen in the biblical description of the church. At least the church as it's supposed to be is actually made of a number of members and there are also leaders in the church. They're part of the church. Their membership, they're part of the membership of the church. They have authority over the members of the church. Various passages make that clear. But at the same time, the leaders are supposed to serve the members of the church like a good king shepherd is to serve his subjects, so also the leaders are to set the needs of the church members above their own personal needs, thus in a sense putting them at a higher authority than they, they are to meet their needs. And then finally, we're told that each member of the church is supposed to submit to every other member of the church and to consider each other member of the church greater than themselves, and for all the members of the church to be one. Once again, we have this some evidence of a top-down hierarchy, a clear, easy-to-understand hierarchy of those in authority over others, but at the same time, this unified aspect of the hierarchy where the different members are one, equal, and mutually submissive to one another. Again, it is difficult in practice to live out what it means to, uh, to, to be in a proper church. But the reason it is, is because it is supposed to picture the unified hierarchy of the Godhead, which is so challenging to understand all by itself. So what we have here is, uh, is at least two different illustrations of the unified hierarchy of the Godhead. We are supposed to understand God's nature, and he tries to help us understand that nature by giving us uh, physical illustrations we're supposed to live out to picture it. These things are difficult. 
the concept of the unified hierarchy of the Godhead is difficult to understand, to comprehend, to really grasp. It is at least as difficult to live out illustrations of it in the church and the home. But that is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to understand the Godhead in its unified nature, uh, unified hierarchical nature, and we are supposed to live out good pictures of it in the home and the church. In addition to the illustrations I've just mentioned, the church and the family, God has also put physical illustrations of the unified hierarchy of the Godhead in the biological world. And perhaps as we look at that in future sessions, it will help us all live out better in our families and in our churches the picture of God that it's supposed to be.